Hello class, welcome to Geometry Lesson 10.3, Chords. So our central question today is, how are chords related to their central angles and intercepted arcs? Our goal is to relate the length of a chord to its central angle and the arc it intercepts. So we're today's lesson, we're going to be defining what a chord is. So let's start with the, that definition. So a, a chord is a segment whose endpoints are on the circle itself. So we have a circle uh, labeled circle A here, center A, and you can see that there are a bunch of uh, line segments on the circle. Now, the two line segments that are that with the endpoints that are on the circle itself are referred to as chords. So this line segment BC with two endpoints, both endpoints are on the circle. Same thing for DE. If you look at those line segments, the both endpoints are on the circle itself and therefore they're, they're referred to as chords. In this case, chord BC and chord DE. Now, a diameter is a chord that goes to the center of a circle. So if you, you've heard of the radius, which is from the center to one point on the circle, well, then the diameter is just, you know, double that essentially, and basically it's two radii stacked together. Now, these, now, this has to be in such a way that the diameter is one single line segment that, uh, that whose endpoints are on the circle, but has to cross the center of the circle. So that would be an example of a diameter. This would be an example of another diameter. And so a diameter is a chord. Both endpoints are on the circle, and so technically it is a chord. Now, notice that from CA here, and then AE here, that is not a diameter because uh, it's not one straight line segment. It's actually composed of two line segments here that are not straight, and therefore it's not considered a diameter. Now, also you wanna note that a diameter cuts a circle in half, and so each half of the circle is 180 degrees. So the arc measure of one side of this diameter is 180 degrees. Now note that diameters are actually the longest chords in any given circle. There is no uh, chord that is longer than the diameter for any given circle. Because as soon as I go to the left of this diameter and go from here to here, it gets shorter. Same thing, if I go to the right, it gets shorter. And so the only, the one that is the longest is the one in the central position. All right, so let's talk about uh, the first theorem for chords. Now, uh, theorem 10-3 states that if you have two chords uh, in a circle, now here are the, um, the two uh, chords here. So this chord and this chord. And uh, if those two are congruent, then that means the, their corresponding central angles must be congruent. And so those, are, those angles are congruent on either side of the, the center T. Now the converse, which is the reverse here, is that if the central angles are equal, say 50 degrees, then their corresponding arcs, or the um, rather the chords, must be congruent. All right, so the next um, theorem on chords states that if you have two arcs that are congruent, in this example, arc MN and arc PQ, then that means that their corresponding chords must be congruent. And these chords are the the um, chords, the line segments that connect the endpoints of the arc. So keep that in mind. It's not just any chord. Now uh, the reverse states that if two chords are congruent, so if these chords are congruent, then that means that their corresponding arcs on the circle must be congruent. All right. So let's look at an example. Uh, we have a circle B on the right hand side, and they said that the measure of angle VBT is 90 degrees. So we're going to label that 90. They also mentioned that arc PR, right, this arc here, is um, 90 degrees. So keeping that in mind, they also mentioned that QR, which is this chord here, is equal to, um, the length of that chord rather, is equal to the length of TU, that chord. All right, so find each measure. So let's find angle PBR. Now we want to find this angle here. So we know that if we want to find that angle, well, that's a central angle. And we know from the from 10 lesson 10.1 that the measure of any arc is congruent to the measure of its central angle and vice versa. So therefore, 
if this arc PR is 90 degrees, then its central angle here must be 90 degrees. So therefore, this is a right angle. So the measure of angle PR is equal to the measure of its arc, in this case PR, um, of the endpoints of that, of that uh, an angle in this case, and therefore must be 90. This is from lesson 10.1. Now part B, the measure of arc TV is what we're gonna look for here. So this arc here, and I'll, I'll introduce another color here. So we're looking at this arc here. So uh, if we want to find that arc, well, it's equal to its central angle, which is that. So there, that's from the, for the same reason uh, that we mentioned in 10.1 for part A. All right, so this is equal to um, the measure of its central angle, which is VBT, which is equal to 90. All right, so these are both less than 10.1. There, there's a theorem in 10.1. Now, uh, identify an angle that is congruent to QBR. So let's introduce another color for that. So we have QBR, this angle here. Um, so we wanna find that angle in purple. Now we know that, um, we know that the, let's see here. We know that, that the chord that corresponds to QBR is QR, and we know that this chord is equal to this chord, right, which is UT. And therefore, that means from the theorem that we introduced earlier, which is um, theorem 10-3, if the arcs, uh, or if the um, central angles are congruent, then the chords must be congruent, and then vice versa, the converse, right, if the chords are congruent, the uh, central angles must be congruent. So therefore, we're gonna be using 10-3 or its converse, depending on direction. Um, to show that this is congruent. Um, so therefore, the um, angle QBR is congruent to angle, uh, in this case, um, UBT. All right, so uh, let's identify a segment that is congruent to TV. So uh, TV is the arc here, this orange arc. So we want to find something that's congruent to that. Well, we know that this arc is not, um, has to be the same as uh, this arc because um, the central angle for that is 90 degrees. We said that here, that the arc on uh, TV is 90. So this is 90 here. And since that arc is congruent to this arc here, 90 degrees, this must mean that their corresponding chords must be congruent. So that means that TV must be congruent to PR. And that's by theorem 10-4, or it's converse, depending on the direction. All right, so let's look at the next theorem. Now that we discussed two theorems uh, for chords, so the third theorem is Theorem 10-5, if chords are equidistant from the center of a circle, um, then they are congruent. So you have the center of the circle here. If it's the same distance from the center of the circle to each of the chords on the circle, so this distance is congruent, then that must mean that the chords themselves are congruent. And in the reverse is if the chords are congruent themselves, so we'll go ahead and get rid of this. If the chords are congruent, then that must mean that the... Um, the distance from the center to those chords must be congruent. Let's look at this example here. So uh, in this circle, it says that angle, the measure of arc AB is 43 degrees. So this arc is 43. AC is equal to DF. So we know that, let's use another color for this here. So this arc AC is equal to or not the arc, rather, I'm sorry, The um, this distance here, AC, is congruent to DF. So those are the same um, length. Find each measure. So we want to find DF, which is the same thing as AC here. Now, the important thing to notice is that because we have, because this is, this, um, 
because these two chords are the same distance from the center here, so this is the same distance, um, then that must mean that, or what, what I should say rather is, what I should say rather is that because the two chords are the same length, then that means these distances must be the same from P to H or from P to G. And that is the converse of theorem of the previous theorem, uh, I believe theorem 10-5. So because that is the case, they're the same distance away. Now, um, because they're the same distance away, if you look at this um, angle here, this from here to here, if you look at that, well, that is a central angle. And so that is a central angle encompassing all of this. All right, so let's look at the following uh, problem. So find CD for the given circle. So we have circle Q, and it states here that the distance, if you notice the distance from um, the center Q to each of those line segments is the same. So it's a distance of six. So we know that these are the same, and therefore this must mean that the, uh, the chords themselves, DC and AB, have to be the same length. And we know it's, it says here that this is uh, 15 on each side because these are, it said that these are congruent, so that's a total of 30. So we know that by the theorem that we mentioned earlier that AB must be congruent to DC because the distances here are the same from the center. Um, and so DC is equal to AB, and we know that AB is 15 plus 15 here which is a total of 30, and therefore DC must be equal to 30. All right, so let's look at the next uh, theorem, next couple of theorems here. So theorem 10-6 states that if a diameter, so in this case the diameter is CD here, so that's the diameter, if the diameter is uh, perpendicular to a chord, uh, this is the chord AB, so in this case the diameter is 90 degrees to that chord, then that must mean it must bisect the chord or you can cut it in half. So therefore, the diameter um, is, serves as a perpendicular bisector. Um, the converse of this states that if a diameter bisects the chord or cuts it in half, then it must be 90 degrees to that um, chord. All right, so the uh, last theorem for chords states that the perpendicular bisector of a chord so if you have any line, any line segment that cuts the chord in half, half and cuts it at a 90 degree angle, then that means that line segment must contain the center of the circle. So like if I had, even if I just had this part here, if I extend that line segment here, it'll contain the center of the circle. And that's useful for, you know, for um, certain problems in which you can extend that line and say, okay, well, it contains the center of the circle. Therefore, it must be a perpendicular bisector. All right, so example three. Uh, in circle P here, the measure of arc AB is 43. So let's uh, label that here. This is 43 degrees, that arc. Um, and it says AC is equal to DF. So let's change the color here. And it says that the chord AC uh, the length of that chord is equal to the length of the chord DF. So we know that those are congruent. And therefore, by one of the previous theorems, uh, we know that these have to be congruent. So remember, it's, it stated that the converse stated that if the chords are congruent, then the distances from the chords to the center of the circle must be congruent. And they are now. All right, so now that we have this, uh, we also know from the other theorem that if a line segment has the center of the circle, which this one does, it contains the center of the circle here, then that must mean it must be a perpendicular bisector. And in fact, we know that this is a 90 degree angle. So using the other theorem, if this is a 90 degree angle, it must cut this in half. So that's cut in half there. So we'll, we'll mark that those are congruent. And similarly, these are congruent. And since we know that this is two, then this must be two for a total of four. So here we know that AC is equal to four. So we'll actually, um, we'll actually write that over here. AC is equal to four. And we know that AC is equal to DF. 
and so df is equal to 4 as well. All right, so now we know because these two line segments are congruent, the two, right, the two here and the two here, then that must mean that if the chord is congruent um, to this chord, then that must mean the arcs must be congruent. So uh, we know that these arcs here must be congruent, that one and then this big, this one here. And since this chord is getting cut in half, that must mean that the central angle must be getting cut in half as well. So this is also going to be 43 degrees. All right, so because if you think about it, that relates to the central angle, and the central angle for this one is 43, the central angle for that one is 43 as well. All right, so we know that arc ABC is equal to the measure of arc AB plus the measure of arc BC. And the um, just adding those together, we got 2 times 43, which is 86 degrees. All right, so now we got FH. So, um, so let me just kind of erase some of this here. So let's look at uh, FH. So for uh, FH, we have uh, this one right here. Well, we know that that's equal to 2 because we mentioned that those are congruent. So this is 2. This is equal to on GC, which is 2. And we know that the measure of arc DE is the same as the measure of uh, either of these arcs because um, because of that uh, one theorem, if the uh, arcs are if the chords are the same, then the arcs are the same. So this is equal to the measure of, for example, arc BC. And arc BC, remember we said was 43. And then uh, finally, we have arc DF. Arc DF is e equal to the measure of arc ABC or AC. Does, uh, doesn't matter. We could call it AC, and uh, which is 86 degrees because of the theorem that we mentioned earlier. If the chords are the same length, then that must mean the arcs are the same length. And if the arcs are the same length, the chords are the same length, and so on. All right. So for the uh, final example, we have a chord uh, is 12 centimeters long. It is 30 centimeters from the center of the circle. Find the radius of the circle. So we'll just draw the diagram here. We'll draw a, a circle here and with center P. And next we'll draw the chord. So let's draw a random chord on the circle. And we'll see that this chord is 30 centimeters from the center of the circle. And the chord itself is 12 inches long or 12 centimeters long. All right, obviously this is not drawn to scale, but we do know from um, one of the previous theorems that if a line segment contains the center of a circle, then it must be a perpendicular bisector to this. And this, this is a line segment that does contain the center of the circle. So that means that this chord must be at a right angle perpendicular to this line, uh, and it must be cut in half. And therefore, each of these is going to be 6. So this is going to be 6 centimeters up here. This is 30. And we're trying to find the radius of the circle. And if you notice that this here is the radius of the circle. So we can find this. And we know that this, since this is a right triangle, we can use the Pythagorean theorem here. All right, so we have here 6 squared plus 30 squared equals r squared. We know that 6 squared is 36. 30 times 30 is 900. We have equal to r squared. We'll add these together. 936 equals r squared. And then finally, we'll take the square root of both sides. So we get r is the square root of 936. Now we can break up 936 uh, into the square root of 36 and the square root of 26. I did this because 36 is a perfect square and the square root of 36 is 6. So we have 6 times the square root of 26. So just so that we can simplify this radical and of course you can get it as a decimal. All right, so that's it for the examples. We're going to cover constructions of, um, so several constructions that relate to chords. 
So the um, the way that these are related is that you're going to you're going to have a circle and you're going to construct a hexagon inside that circle. So we're going to show you how to do that. So we have some kind of hexagon, and in order to do a circumscribed or an inscribed hexagon, we're going to need to draw we're going to need to draw some chords, and these chords connect to the circle to construct the hexagon. So we're going to show you how to do that. So uh, first off, you're going to have a circle. You're going to mark point Q on the circle. Now you're going to set the compass to the radius of the circle, placing the compass at Q and drawing an arc through the circle. So you have a circle. You're going to mark a point Q. Um, you're going to measure this radius and then use that radius to construct an arc. And then step three, you're going to keep the compass and then move the uh, keep the setting for the compass and then move it so that you can draw an arc from here to the next point. And then you're going to keep doing this until you get a total of five arcs. And then finally, you're going to connect each of those chords uh, in order to construct your hexagon. So let's look at the steps here. So we have mark point Q on the circle. Next, we're going to set the compass to the radius of the circle. Then we're going to uh, keep uh, draw an arc, then keep the compass setting, move it to the arc, and draw another arc, and continue until you get a total of five arcs. Final step, you're going to draw chords connecting the consecutive arcs on the circle, as we're doing now. Each of the arcs get connected. And then when you finally do this, you're going to have a total of six sides because you had five arcs here. And you get your erase, erase some of your scratches. And finally, you'll get your hexagon. All right, so the steps to construct the triangle uh, inscribed in a circle. First off, you're going to mark point Q on the circle like we did earlier. You're going to set the compass to the radius of the circle. Place the compass point at Q, draw an arc. You're going to draw a total of five arcs, exactly what you did for the hexagon. And then this time, instead of connecting every consecutive arc, you're going to connect every other arc. So let's show you the steps here. The steps here are identical up until the last part. So mark point Q on the circle. Set the compass to the radius of the circle. Place the pump compass point at Q, draw an arc through the circle. Keep the compass setting, move the arc to the arc, and draw another circle. Continue drawing a total of five arcs here. And this time connect every other arc rather than every single arc. Erase your scratches here, your arcs, and you get your final product. And the final construction here is the constructing a square inscribed in a circle. So you're going to mark point Q on the circle, like we did earlier. Draw a diameter from point Q to the other side of the circle. We'll call the other point R. So you'll have a little circle here. You'll pick a point Q. You'll draw a diameter and label this point R. You'll set the compass to, um, you're, you'll basically be drawing arcs above and below from R and from Q to construct a perpendicular bisector. Draw a line through the points where the arcs cross, which is your perpendicular bisector, making sure to cross the circle. And then therefore, and then finally, you'll connect your chords here to get your square. Now, the reason this works is that when you draw uh, one of the properties of a square is that its diagonals are always uh, perpendicular. And so if I draw a diameter, uh, of a circle, so this point is saying that this line is my diameter, then all I have to do is construct a perpendicular um, bisector um, that's 90 degrees to this, and therefore uh, I can make the use the property of the square. All right, so the first step, mark point Q on the circle. Next, you're going to draw a diameter from point Q to the other side. We'll call the other point R. Set the compass to a bit beyond the radius QP, and then draw an arc above and below point P. Repeat this for point R, keeping the same setting for your compass. Step four, draw a line through the points where the arcs cross, making sure to cross the circle. We'll call the new points S and T. Step five, draw chords connecting consecutive points 
on the circle. Racer scratches to reveal the final product. All right, that's gonna do it for the video, guys. I hope you found this useful. I uh, hope you took a few things. And as usual, I'll see you in the next one.